Hello everyone, my name is Oliver Bockhaus. I work for Math Finance, a uh, consulting company specializing in financial derivatives. Today we're going to talk about local stochastic volatility as a model to value financial derivatives uh, in foreign exchange. Let's get started. There are a variety of models aiming at capturing the volatility skew of foreign exchange markets. To start with, the local volatility model sets the volatility as a deterministic function of the exchange rate. The stochastic volatility model defines volatility as a process in its own right. What I wrote down here is the Heston dynamics where we have uh, two Brownian motions which may be correlated. So we've got two models which capture the volatility skew of foreign exchange. Now the question is, which one should we choose? And the answer is uh, neither, or better, a mixture of two. So that's what this local stochastic volatility is about. And um, that is achieved by multiplying the local function with the stochastic volatility process and this has to be done in such a way as to still calibrate to volatility smile and by changing the dynamics of the stochastic volatility process one can blend this model from a pure local volatility type model into a largely stochastic volatility type model. We're going to see how that is done. The local volatility model, but all of these models need to be calibrated to the market. In the local volatility case, this is achieved using the Pierce formula, and the uh, local volatility function can be expressed in terms of prices of market European options. Uh, in the stochastic volatility case, one has here, uh, in this case, five parameters and one may use uh, minimization routines to find the parameters which match the market best. In the local stochastic volatility case, one specifies the stochastic volatility process first, and then one needs to determine the local volatility function in such a way as to match the implied volatility smile of the market. So the freedom is in the stochastic volatility process, but once that's fixed, the local volatility function is determined by the market of, of uh, European options, pretty much in the same way as you would have to specify it in the local volatility case. Um, okay, now I'm going to show you an example of our implementation. Um, I've calibrated the model beforehand, but I can now change the payoff. So first I'm going to show you the quality of the calibration. What, I'm, what we are looking at is um, European options on euro dollar with different strikes and they are one year maturity. So down here you see the different strikes. Each, each point would refer to different product. And what we're going to show you is the implied volatility differences uh, obtained from the different model types and the market. And I'm going to run this now. Okay. So on the left hand side, you see uh, volatility points in, in basis points. So 0 0.05 means a volatility difference of 0.05% annualized. The models we are talking about are local vol and stochastic vol compared to the uh, volatility smile we have derived from uh, skewed market data. Then there's three local stochastic vol types. One is the local vol mode, where we set the vol of vol to zero, meaning that the local stochastic vol model actually reduces to a local vol model. In the dashed blue line, we have used stochastic vol mode, where we calibrate stochastic vol as best as we can, so effectively using the same parameters as in the SV case, 
but then we overlay a local volatility such as to match the implied volatility smile for all maturities, not just the one year maturity in question here. And the green line we're going to come to later. So that is, a, is our fit. Now we're going to move on to exotic products. The first example is a double touch product. So what it is, it's again euro dollar, a one year maturity. The nominal is 1 million. Barrier down level ranges from 1.09 and upwards and up level 1.3 and upwards. And we pay if we don't hit either barrier. So if we start calculating, we're going to see now price differences. So this is the price difference um, between these five different model types, standard local vol, standard stochastic vol, LSV local vol type, stochastic vol type, and the mix. And it's a price difference between those and the theoretical value, which is obtained using a constant volatility Black-Scholes model. The um, green line is a mix between local stochastic vol with no vol of all and local stochastic vol with full vol of all, where we chose the vol of all parameter to 60% of the stochastic vol calibrated vol of all parameter. What we obtain is the price between the two dashed lines and by changing the mixing parameter, effectively dampening the vol of vol, we can obtain any price in between the two dashed lines. Now just as a second example I show you how this looks like for double barrier option. So instead we pay a call option in case I don't hit either barrier. Um, before I just paid one if I didn't hit either barrier. And again we see a similar, similar shape. The only the, the one difference you may observe is the dashed red and the stark red line. They are pretty close because the models are mathematically the same and the difference you observe is pretty much numerical. Uh, on the dashed blue and the stark blue line, the difference is uh, not just numerical. The Heston model has only five parameters and it tries to calibrate to the one year maturity as best as it can but it cannot perfectly calibrate the whole surface. So the LSV model would be able to calibrate different maturities as well. So there's a non-trivial local volatility function overlaid here. And in this case, it leads also to a slightly different price. So that's actually all I wanted to talk about here. Um, just to go back to uh, our slides. Uh, if you want to know more about these models, uh, please contact uh, Math Finance. And um, we actually develop this software. You can purchase it, we, and we can implement it in your environment.